On today's video, we're going to cover the topic of brake floaters. It's been a little bit of discussion of how and when and why to use them. And today we're going to cover those facts. More on that when we get back. Brake floaters. It's a subject somebody asked me to do a video on, so we're going to cover a little video. It's not going to be a long video, but we'll cover the usage, um, when to use it and how to use it, the brake floater. Why are we using a brake floater versus just having brakes on the birdcage or maybe just having brakes on the axle tube? Um, the brake floater has been around for a while. I don't know really when it come to um, the mainstream, but it has been a popular tool for quite a while. And it's been used in multiple different functions uh, or arrays of a function on the left rear, right rear of a car. Uh, most popular, it's been on the left rear. But we have over the years done some highly successful stuff on the right rear that was probably more uh, user friendly, track friendly uh, versus fundamentally friendly. So the brake floater is a tool that we use to control the left rear brake bracket. It is connected to the car through a rod. Uh, separate from the birdcage. It can be used with a three-link or a four-link setup. It could possibly even be, I, you, I've used it in stock car situations in the past, but I'm going to say for the most part, it's probably not legal in the stock car world. Um, brake floater on the left rear has been a good piece, um, and I feel like it's better in a hard tire situation versus a, uh, a car that gets a lot of grip. Uh, brake floater, like I said, it, it uses its own rod. So there's a rod connected to it. Uh, the brake is floated on the axle tube. And in the last 20 years, it's been done on a bearing. Uh, originally it was um, done just metal on metal and probably not done as well as it is today. The brake floater is, is uh, consisted of these parts and the caliper hooks to it, and then a rod hooks to it that goes to your chassis, okay? The rod is generally uh, inch, inch and a half longer than the four-link rod and maybe one to two holes higher than the four-link rod. Some of the things that you need to understand or take in consideration when using a brake floater is that the upper rod or the rod is longer than your four-link rod. The brakes can cam over, and when they do, they will wipe out uh, the brake cable, and you'll end up losing all your brakes on the left rear. So it's always advised to have a longer um, rod on the brake floater. Whether it's on the right rear or the left rear, I would suggest to have uh, at least an inch, inch and a half longer rod we always did an inch and a half. The other thing to think about when you're doing a brake floater and with some of the stuff that we're doing today, even with the cammed over left rear, make sure that when you're using aftermarket calipers that the bleeder does not get in the way of the system because you can knock that bleeder off real quick. Um, has happened several times on the cam Dover deal, but it's also happened many times in the past uh, with a brake floater. A brake floater can come built 90 degrees or at 45 degrees. The orientation of the brake floater around the axle is not really that important. But if you're on a small tire left rear and maybe have a flat, you can drag the brake floater on the ground. So having it orientated up a little would probably be good for that scenario. Where it's at in the 360 degrees of the axle is not that critical because when going forward and a force is applied, it'll transmit that force up through the rod and cause the chassis to want to lift. The main advantage of a brake floater is to establish load um, on the chassis. Now, Everybody thinks that the main advantage or the main purpose of the brake floater is to do the trail braking 
scenario or the trail breaking part of, if you do a little research on the internet and uh, search trail breaking, you'll learn that dirt racers are the only ones trail breaking in the fashion that we are, um, trying to make trail breaking part of uh, car handling that really shouldn't be uh, the part that it's handling. Uh, getting the car into the corner, trail braking is the distribution of weight. We're just trying to simply hold the lifter up all the time. Me, the brake floater works primarily best at getting the car on the nose. Um, like I said, there's not a lot of adjustment. Brake floater has three holes in it. Um, we always start out with the rod in the top hole. And as you move it down, it increases the angle of the rod, which increases the force applied to the front end. So a brake floater applies good force to the front of the car. And, and as I said earlier, it's best in a car that doesn't have a lot of tire grip or lacks a lot of front grip. So the brake floater, by utilizing the brake floater with some angle and the brakes, it allows the car to get through traffic much better. Uh, it allows us to get the car down on the nose a little bit and, um, you know, to get some front grip in the car. Uh, this is primarily the biggest advantage to the brake floater, in my opinion, is to transfer weight to the nose. Uh, some people just like it. Now, brakes on the brake floater, brake on the axle, brakes on the birdcage. Um, the scenario of brake on a brake floater probably is best on a open wheel mod with a uh, open motor. Uh, a crate mod, you can still run a brake floater and it still gives you the benefits of getting the car to the nose. Uh, might be better on smaller racetracks, but if you're gonna race a crate car, um, a lot of times the brakes are not a big part of that system. So maybe clamping to the birdcage and getting the car up on the bars for a restart might be a, uh, more important to the car. So different scenarios to look at with the brake floater. As I've said, we've seen them run on the right, um, but to, in my opinion, in my opinion, the brake floater bar angle is the most critical part. So it's kind of like, um, you know, I, I refer it to going out and shooting a gun. If you want that bullet to land out here in front of you, you're gonna have to shoot it pretty straight up and down so it does like this. If you shoot it like this, it'll land out there long ways from you. Well, that's the same as the force going through the brake floater, the braking forces. If you put bar angle in it, it pushes up and down and pushes the nose into the ground. If you lower the bar, it'll push the nose to the wall. So if you reverse the bar and run it under the axle, you're only increasing the angle of the thrust. So if your goal is to hold the left rear up in place with the brakes, then my suggestion would be to find a better source to hold the car up. There are much better sources to hold the car up, preloaded left rear spring, driving techniques, um, better than this. The problem with the brakes has always been a couple of things that you can't seem to get past. And one would be needing to put my foot on the brake because of traffic. So if I'm trying to hold the car up and I got to get off the brakes or I got to get on the brakes harder, this creates a bad scenario for the car in traffic. So that corner is probably uh, banished because of it. So to me, holding the car up, and it doesn't do a very good job of holding the car up. It, it does not a very good job at all. So um, driving techniques, preloaded spring, some left or shocks, uh, do a much better job of holding the car up in, in posture uh, than the brake floater. So running the brake floater in a traditional traditional condition uh, or running it with a rod on the bottom is all about bar angle and the thrust that the bar angle puts through the car. So if you're not good at running the brakes, then maybe more bar angle will be. When we run the uh, traditional setup rod on top, down in the hole, it would put our car on the nose anywhere on the racetrack and pretty hard. So uh, I don't know that you need much more angle than that. 
Uh, a lot of times you are topped out on the chassis side, so you can lower it down on, on the brake floater side. But like I said, when you're all the way up on most chassis and down on the brake floater, it creates a tremendous amount of force on the front of the car. Okay, so brake floaters, there's probably uh, some varieties in how many uh, that are being built. A lot of them have been copied from ours. Um, and people have done things to try to separate themselves in the market by adding more bearings and different types of things. Um, we have them in a single bearing, which is the most popular version. We have them in a dual bearing. And we have them in a little wider array to accept being clamped to the axle tube. Um, all this clamped unclamp deal just creates um, problems in the system because brakes are very important to the car. And I think that the brake system needs to be dedicated to the car. So if you're going to change the brake system in um, a matter of five minutes because you don't want it on the brake floater, this should have been a decision probably made long before going to the racetrack. So making this type of decision at the racetrack is weak at best, uh, so don't do it. Uh, brakes are important. So having a system that's fully interchangeable is not that important and not that good. So put more emphasis on quality of brakes because quality of brakes and brake pads and brake system is highly important. So um, study that system, understand that system, and work on your brakes to have better brakes. Um, brake floaters, like I said, have most of them follow the, our design, has been copied by many, um, and I'm sure that they all are similar to the same on today's standards. So uh, brake floaters are a good tool for a car and a good tool for a driver. So if you have the desire to run a brake floater, run it. It's a good tool. Uh, but don't expect it to do more than it's going to do. So brake floaters in short, great tool. Run the rod longer. Um, run the top, start in the top hole, put some angle in it, get the car on the nose. Uh, learn the feel of a brake floater before advancing into something else. So as always, guys, go fast, go left. God bless you. And we'll see you next time.